there, straight over there. Okay. Every day at Luton, over 100 passengers miss their flights. No, no, no chance. No, it's got on time slot, I'm afraid. Some take it well. Sorry, that's a no. Oh. Can't get you off. And some don't. <laughs> no, really, you can't get on that flight. Oh, no! Oh, no! Michelle Salinger has arrived 15 minutes late for the morning flight to Barcelona. I'm interviewing a whole load of teachers what are they on the next and one? At, at, at a college, and then I'm going to a university to interview teachers as well. And then I, I let them down last time because I, because of the September 11th thing. They're all set up for me to see them, and I let them down at the last minute. And I, you know, I can't let these guys down. They've given up their time for me. They've rescheduled all their classes for me. She's desperate to be allowed on the flight, but it's not looking good. No, 7.20, oh, no, sorry. I've got to get on. The flight's on time. Let me just check. Oh, please, please. I've got my appointments. I've got 20 people waiting to be interviewed by me. Oh, please don't do this to me. No, there isn't, honestly. Oh, God, what am I going to do? You've got no idea how important it is. Let all these guys... Can you just to confirm the Barcelona's on time? Michelle's pleading wins her one last chance. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, he's definitely on time. Oh, no, please. Let's get through. But she's out of luck. The next time is at five past one. That's so good. Got to beat them before. The next Barcelona flight won't even leave until after Michelle should have arrived. It's not one of her better mornings. Back at the sales desk, Michelle is still coming to terms with her disastrous morning. Well, I thought it was 7.40, and, and I, but my taxi was 20 minutes late turning up. The traffic was dreadful, and it was meant to come at 6. And I would have been here in time, but the taxi was 20 minutes late. I phoned up twice to get it to come. Supervisor Sam Jones offers an alternative. What we can do is we can offer you, it's not what you need, but it's what we can offer, because it's all we've got to offer you. And it's a free transfer, so you're not going to get charged anything else for the lunchtime flight. We'll get you on that flight, OK? And then in the meantime, is that gives you time to, to cons... Now? Um, there isn't anyone from here. We can get some numbers. What about... Ooh, get we... Ooh. How long would it take to get to Stansted from here? Monday morning now, aren't we? Oh, it's going to take an hour. I mean, it's not yeah, easy. Yeah, it is. So you have to get on for five hours. Oh, my God, no And you have 25 at about five o'clock to miss the traffic, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> But none of the options will get Michelle to Barcelona in time to meet her teachers. I could have got that flight. They let me go at five past. Um, it's, it'll take a few What minutes. I'm trying to do now is yeah. see if we can ring possibly one of the other airlines and uh, get her on one of those, see if there's anything any earlier. But the problem is she's got such a long way to go to any other nearby airport. She's going to be stuck in the same position with traffic, so I think probably her best bet is really to stick with a lunchtime flight. Yeah. With little real choice, Michelle agrees to take the later flight. <laughs> Just feel sick. One problem at least has been resolved. Having phoned her teacher and after a four-hour wait, Michelle checks in for the Barcelona flight. Are you right? I missed the earlier flight. Oh, did you? Yeah. I'm coping now. Yeah. <laughs> The gate number is 1A. Glad you made the flight. Boarding is at 12.35. Okay. For Michelle, it's better late than never. Yeah, I'm on my way. <laughs> Thank goodness. Back at Luton, browbeaten Mel encounters a regular problem. I've got my passport and my driving licence. My wife hasn't got her um, passport and neither is my son. We do have to have one form of ID, like I say. You haven't got one of those. So you won't, we can't fly? No, not unless you have one of those. The only thing I can do for you now is try and stay on to the next flight. I'll just go without and forget about it. 
There must be something you could do. No, there's not. There's no. absolutely not. It's totally different. But why? What are you worried that if, I am? If I get on a train, if I get on a train and go up to Scotland, to I don't actually that's have to have a passport train, to get. Yeah, it's of course it's a bloody train, but it's going to the same place. Right. Just low voice there. I am so, getting just hello. a slightly bit off of this, but well, it strikes me as being very strange. I can't do anything about it, ma'am. We have no discretion. I've got loads of identification. I've got loads of cards with me. I've got everything, but I haven't got a photograph. Not the train. Yeah. Okay. I was going to send you to Edinburgh. The problem appears to be that we haven't got our photo ID to try and travel to Scotland, which, as far as I can remember, was in the British Isles. What can we do? We're utterly hamstrung by these thick-headed people wearing orange suits who say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. I mean, you know, it's my son and my wife. It's not as though I'm importing some sort of strange eight-armed monster. How stupid is that? The Tillies are supposed to be flying to Scotland for dinner with friends tonight, but if Caroline can't make the next flight, she'll be dining alone. Hopefully I'll get home and back in time to catch that flight. If I miss that flight, I might just abandon the whole trip. With the next flight to Edinburgh closing at 16.50, Caroline has just one hour, 53 minutes to get home, find her passport and return to the airport. Over at Luton Airport, things aren't running quite as smoothly. The new departure screen in the bar apparently has a mind of its own. Who's telling me why this happened? I don't know, basically. I really Passenger Graham Sinclair was waiting for the delayed 1600 flight to Glasgow. I went into the bar and just sat, ordered a pint, and I was looking at the screen, and it still says expected time 1755. And then all of a sudden the screen changes and says, like, no boarding gate 14. So I, mean, I left that in my pint, walked upstairs and looked at the screen and it says closed. With the screens apparently urging people to stay in the bar until their flights have departed, it's not long before another passenger misses her flight. She's saying um, basically that they didn't put their screens on final call, which they always do. It does it automatically. I was watching that screen all the time. So it went from go to get 16 to get close. All my colleagues who have spoken to me about yourself, they have been telling me that the screens did say that the gate was boarding. And no, 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 it did not. I can promise you it did not. Are you calling me a liar? I I never no, no, no. That. Well, you are basically, aren't you? No, those words. You're basically calling me a liar. No, you've told me that I, what I've told you was not true. So you're basically no, calling me a liar. And with the next flight to Nice fully booked, things are not looking good. All I can do for you is transfer your flight tomorrow morning. I want to be on the flight tonight. You cannot get on the flight tonight. There is not one available seat. And when the flight is not full because people don't turn up, what will you do? Nothing. Well, I think you should do something for me. I can't do anything for you when people have brought Right, I'm a journalist and you'll be... I will write up about how bad you think, behave you guys have been because, quite frankly, it's crap. You're going to put me on flight tonight tomorrow morning? Um, I thought you just said I was crap. Can you get me a manager? I can do, but he'll say exactly Can the same. you get me a manager? Yeah, I can. If you just Good. Give me a minute. Get him now. Got nothing me Lindy Adlam and Graham Sinclair have missed their flights. They blame the departure screens. And EasyJet chief Matt Sherwood is called upon to sort it out. Um, I understand you were, you were in the bar and you missed the, the final yeah. call to the gate. But why the hell should I go and sit in some poxy gate okay. when you're not even going to be taking off for another two or three hours? OK, can I just bring you to the point that it did say on there, go to gate 16. Well, of course it says go to gate 16. But you didn't go. No, I didn't go because the other, okay. the other, the other people are saying. What can we expect to do? The other people are saying final call. Yeah, and the way when you it do, says final call, you run, you go. Well, if you choose to do that, then you run the risk of being offloaded, which Absolutely you have. Absolutely bollocks. There's child right behind you. Can you not swear? Bollocks is not a swear word. With Matt getting nowhere fast, his problems get twice as hard. Uh, Expect the time, it says 1655. Now, all of a sudden, the screen changes and says boarding gate 14. Now, I left downstairs, went upstairs, and it says upstairs gate closed. An explanation would be lovely. With no simple solution in sight, Lindy appeals to Matt's softer side. I'm now going to miss a night with my daughter. I have very precious time with my daughter, and it's not fair. Oh, no, don't get yourself up. No, 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 I 
I'm upset. Because you don't care. I do care. No, you don't care. You could get me on the next flight, but you don't care. Okay. I have a small child who's dying to see me. Okay. I work so hard for my living. Back in ten minutes. <laughs> Still getting nowhere, Matt heads to the bar to check the mystery screens. Back in Luton, Matt's checking the bar departure screens. They work on a strict sequential system, the last three commands being boarding at gate, final call and, lastly, gate closed. I've just gone and compared both screens, the one that was in the bar and the one that's in the main food court, and they're both running in sync and they're both showing exactly the same information. So all I can assume then is the passengers have had some confusion with what they've managed to see in the time they looked at the screens. With no apparent gremlins, Graham has probably just confused his delayed flight to Glasgow with the next Glasgow flight, which was departing on time just 30 minutes later. And Matt has a diplomatic explanation for Lindy. All I'm saying is, is your strategy of boarding flights, those two or three minutes Mate, have cost you a flight. Are you telling me it's my fault? I'm not, it's not a fault thing. It's just that the strategy you chose has, has failed you today. I'm sympathetic to her, the fact that she had, especially she's had a child in Nice, but at the end of the day, she had made that mistake herself. With nothing more that can be done, the two passengers agree to be moved to the next available flights. The night is knackered, really. I had a, a meal book for 7.30 this evening, so it's pointless now. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll, have to, I'll probably have to stay somewhere locally and fly tomorrow morning. <coughs> With Lindy in search of a hotel, the bar screens are still working fine. It's just hard to read them sometimes. At EasyJet's other UK base, Liverpool Airport, the Belfast flight is about to depart. One passenger's just missed the check-in. Wilma Morrison needed to get to Ireland today to sort out the custody of her son. I've only got hand luggage. Oh, come on. Check-in supervisor Leanne Chung tries to help. I'm going to go to my wee. I'm having problems with my kids. My wee boy. I'm going to go to my wee boy if I don't get there. Sorry, you can't go, it's too late. There's another flight tonight, of course, at past That's nine. That's good, it's ten past, I can run. We've only got seven minutes before I can departure. run, I'll be there in three minutes. We won't let you travel on the flight, it's too late. Go on tonight, of course, at past nine. That's no good to me. Liverpool, Wilma Morrison's back trying to transfer from EasyJet to another airline. Excuse me, can you transfer that here? You just said to me two minutes ago you transferred it. No, I said you could ask if you need to speak to Sarah's air. I never told you to speak, speak to who? I told you that you could speak to Ryanair, which is Sarah's air. Where's Ryanair, is it not? Yes, but it doesn't mean that I can transfer your EasyJet ticket. You have to pay for a new ticket. You told me if I, I get never. them, you said to me you could transfer it. I never. Excuse me. Tired and anxious, the frustration's telling. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Just a minute. No, thanks. You got the confirmation number? No. Are you sitting smoking for her? Yeah, smoking. You've not got any children, have you? No. You're making them batches at you. You're going to be rude, you can leave the desk. Rude, you're going to eat smart, right? You're going to eat smart. You want to go away, you're going to carry on swearing, then you can go. You're saying smoking. Excuse me. Excuse me. The only thing that you can do with us now is transfer to the next flight, which is a quarter past nine. We can't transfer with another company. You have to go and pay with you're the You left me about 50 minutes to tell me now. Can I speak to the manager, please? There's no manager here, I'm the supervisor. You're the supervisor, yeah. you ought to be a cleaner. Wilma later decided to take the EasyJet flight. That was disgusting. I can't believe that someone was at the nerve to speak to someone so disgustingly. And I don't appreciate anyone calling me an evil bitch just because she turns up late for her flight five minutes before departures. I tried my best for her, and that's what you get. It's just disgusting. Can I help you? I got here at nine. Meanwhile,